Hi, uh, my name is John Tierney, or better known maybe as J.F. Tierney, the dog trainer. But I suppose the majority of ye will know me because of Juke, my dog Juke. This was one of my favourite places to come with Juke. This stretch of river here, um, he loved to swim here. He'd go out and he'd hold himself up against the current as they are over there now. He would just swim against the current and stay out there for, for oh, as long as I'd let him. You know, he loved water. Um, I always like to come back here. It just reminds me a little bit of him, I suppose. But it's one of my one of my many favourite places I like to visit. And I spend a lot of my time on my own. I suppose it's good for your head just to get out, get away from everything, switch off for a while. And this is one of the places that I switch off in. This is one of them. I come here with the dogs and I suppose I'm not really alone as long as the dogs are with me. The Great Duke. How did I first come to meet him or how did I first come to own him? Well, it was a bit of luck really because um, it was all to do with papers and no papers and papers and dogs. And you've always heard me say that the papers have never met a dog. You know, the best dogs hunting now are dogs without papers. But uh, I was contacted by this bloke and he said, John, I have a dog here. It's bred out of Frank Mansell's sire. Top looking dog, lovely dog, showing great potential. Only problem is, John, I cannot get his papers. The, the owner will not forward the papers. I'm not able to get them. He said, if you're interested, I'll sell you the dog. So I said, OK. And as always, I went off thinking, well, I'm going to see an average dog here and maybe he'll be OK. And that I remember I'll never forget that evening when I went there and he let this dog out and he just ran across the yard. And here to me was poetry in motion. Here was the most beautiful Springer I had ever seen. I could see so much potential in him that evening. I just knew this was a dog that knew he was meant for big things. He just looked so confident in the way he moved. He just carried himself lovely. And I remember he just sat up at the end of the drive. He just sat. And even that day, as a young pup, the Duke knew how to show himself. The railway was a huge, huge part of Chum when I was growing up. Um, trains would go there to knock, people going to knock and people going to Clare Morris. And the biggest part of it, I suppose, was the campaign, what they called the campaign. And that was when the carriages would be full of potatoes and full of sugar beet. Um, there was a huge process in factory down there at, the, at that time. And, most people had one or two people working there and it was a huge employer for the town, you know, and when it went, it, I suppose, was part of the downfall of Chum, and Chum has never come back to itself since that. Now, the, the tracks may not be wasted and there's an ongoing campaign to make it into part of the Greenway to have a walking track, cycling track along there, uh, which would be a good idea because, you know, exercise is good for us all and there's no one likes walking more than me. And I am not averse to getting on the bike either. But uh, I don't know, is it going to happen soon? Because again, I see or I hear that it may take another few years to get approval and everything else. And, you know, why do these things drag on so long? You know, why do they drag on? Just make the decision. If the money's there, just start doing it and get something good happening in Chum. And I would spend a lot of time there with two of my good friends, Gerlitz and Tommy. And uh, we would have a deck of cars and we would stay there all day playing cards or just walk around and it might be freezing cold, it might be raining, but it didn't matter. We were not in school and that was all that mattered. Uh, then maybe in the evening we would walk that track and we would walk it for miles, just going from step to step on the the beams, the timber beams going across or maybe try and walk up on the track and see who could walk the furthest without tipping off. You know, and then a few things we used to do, which we shouldn't, I suppose, was we'd put a two P kind along the rail, just on the top of the rail. And when the train had run over, it would flatten it. And then we would make a little hole in it and you'd use it as a little, little badge around your neck or whatever. We would do that. But even more, I suppose, even more dangerous or whatever was, there was a, a bridge about half a mile out uh, out the track and we would go there and we would know the times of the trains what time the trains would be coming and we would go under that bridge and sit on a little concrete platform underneath it we'd sit there and the train would roar over our heads and you could hear over and the noise was intense but it was it was just a sign of bravery i suppose 
I suppose we weren't in any real danger, but if I knew my children were doing it at that age, I, I, they'd get a kick in the arse. But we did it because we got away with it. And those were a few of the things we used to do as a child. The proposed site for the Chum Mental Health Facility, uh, I wonder how long before it'll actually be open. In 2018, funding was allocated for a new mental health facility in Chum. Now, in 2020, the building, like those in need of the facility, is in disarray. The fact that the tender is not filled, combined with an upcoming general election, worries me. Some of the facts and figures regarding mental health on this island are just frightening. Bookie shops, they're everywhere in town now and people wonder why there's a mental health problem. The handball alley, you couldn't have been doing better for your mental health. But I'm afraid, like a lot of things in Chum, it's gone. The day everything changed, I suppose, was... Uh, I'd been at the hospital i'd been for one of my routine checks on on my prostate and i got quite good news that day and i was very happy coming home and i arrived back here and um, my world changed i suppose for a bit of better word because when i came home i had realized that the duke had been stolen he'd been taken from here that someone had come in here into my property and taken my lovely lovely duke Introduce you to these two lads here. This is Earl and this is Duke Jr. Both Ju Duke's sons and great dogs and the same lovable, ability, lovable nature as he had. Um, all they wanted to be with me, spend time running around with me, out hunting, just be with me all the time. Good boy. Anyone that suffers from anxiety or depression or anything like that, they'll know that it's, it's not a nice thing. And, being that there's a bit of a stigma involved, it's it's something you've always kept to yourself, something you haven't shared. And I did for a long time. I never shared my feelings and how I really felt and my worries about certain things. And I suppose one thing to help me cope with that was my love of dogs, my love of nature, just getting away from everything and being able to go out into the fields with a dog for those few hours and forget all my worries, forget everything that was weighing down on me, every pressure I felt was eased by just being out with the dogs, walking the fields, after rabbits, whatever. That was a great help to me. You know, some people might say, sure, John, he was just a dog, you know, he was just an ordinary old dog. Well, Duke wasn't just an ordinary dog. Duke was an exceptional dog. And Duke was a part of my life that he came into when I really needed him, you know, when I was, I suppose, on a, on a down, not feeling the best, worried about different things. And he helped me forget about those. For all the times I spent with him, he helped me forget all those things, you know. And there isn't a day goes by that I don't sit and think. And maybe when I'm walking in the fields and I see his son now, who reminds me so much of him. And I think of Duke and I think of where he is or who has him or whatever happened to him. And, you know, I wonder who disliked me enough to actually come here to my home and actually break in and steal my great Duke. Who disliked me enough? 
I have been contacted by uh, quite a few people and quite a few people that in my eyes they are really really rock bottom and you know they can't go any lower and I suppose they've come out to me and just said John um, what you say your videos they just you know they brighten up my day that little bit and they encourage me to move on and I suppose in, in some ways it frightens me to think that I have that control or that effect on some people but uh, I do you know just just last night I was contacted by someone that had attempted um, made an attempt on their lives and uh, luckily enough like I have with my anxiety and everything else they sought help and they went for help and help was made available to them and they're in a better far far better place today as I am and uh, that's what I want to encourage you to do is to please please if you're not feeling 100% as far as I say myself if you're having a shit day it's okay as long as every day is not a shit day you know so please just reach out ask for help contact a family member contact me whatever but there is a lot of organizations that are a lot more expert at this than I am but you know if you need details I'll get them for you whatever but please please don't give up on life you know life is precious Life is precious and life can be a lot better than it is now for you. So look for that help and it is there and you'll find it.